How will you impact the world? Could there be a better driving question for learning? We know from research that people are motivated, above all, by purpose. Some of you have seen this picture at the West Fargo STEM Center. It's an example of learning through doing. It's an example of purposeful learning. We know that when st students learn by doing, they're experiencing the world. And the challenges that they're going to face in the 21st century are challenges that are complex and don't fit within the boundaries that we have within schools. We also focus on teaching the whole child. Because it's the whole child that comes to school, they come with hands, they come with hearts, they come with minds, they come with ideas and passions. Learning is a personal process, and so we put the person first. We have to embrace all these conditions in a compassionate culture in our schools. And when we do, we get results. These are our math and reading scores. And you can see that in a place where you learn by doing, where learning is a personal process and we teach the whole child, that we get results. But if we let these narrow views dictate everything that we do in education, we're, not gonna, we're gonna miss out on a whole lot. Because these kids are more than that. We're preparing them not just for a career, but for life. They make me a believer. Some things are hard to measure, but they're easy to see. They're kind, they're articulate, they're problem solvers, they're our future innovators and leaders. And so, we had a problem. Our community wanted to support us. Every year we had a lottery at the STEM Center. And when we had that lottery, we had to turn away twice as many students as we could take in. We wanted to grow, but we needed more educators to experience STEM so that they could become champions too. So we came up with an innovative solution. Students and educators learning together. We dreamed of a place where we could guide professional learning with teachers, where they could have space to innovate and create a breeding ground for that innovation. We wanted to decrease summer regression in students. Because in a world that changes as fast as ours, it's important that we all learn together. True learning has no position or age requirement. And so we were impressed. People actually showed up. We had 17 teachers and 25 driven students that attended the STEM Academy this summer. And we were united around creating a goal, or having a goal of creating a legacy through learning. This wasn't your typical professional learning. Here, we taught the whole learner. We had teachers exercising. We had students teaching teachers about new technology that would work in their projects. We had teachers piloting new project ideas, and engaging themselves in hands-on learning to, to experience it. They were reading, they were writing, they were doing real authentic work. We even had an occasional water balloon fight. This isn't your typical professional learning. We weren't sitting and listening. This is a big change for educators, because most of us grew up in a classroom like this. This is passive. It's worksheets, it's scantrons, it's busy work. It's covering the textbook from cover to cover. We can do better than that in the 21st century. Research tells us that we need to. When students are reading or lectured to, they're remembering very little of what we say. But when we involve them, when they're learning by doing or teaching things to other people, they learn a whole lot more. Research also tells us that learning is physical. It's emotional. It's social. It's messy. It's connected. We need to do more to engage our students. The rules have changed, so let's revolutionize this classroom. And I'm not talking about simply taking old wine and putting it in a new bottle. I'm talking about throwing out that whole bottle and starting over, because we need to engage our students. In this country, we don't just have an achievement gap, we have an engagement crisis. This is what researchers call the school cliff. From elementary school on, our kids become more and more disengaged. And the irony is that as they're learning more about the real world, the more they realize that the game of school isn't connecting to it. 
We go from finger painting to 150 question tests, and somewhere along that continuum, we're losing the joy of learning. So what does this new learning look like? Here's what it looks like from 1,000 feet. Here, the world is our curriculum. And we facilitate standards-driven projects with the engineering design process. Because when you design something, you have to be active and engaged in the material. When you design something, it integrates across disciplines. The complex problems in our world need to be solved by the next generation. We need to prepare them. Here's one example of how we do that. Step one, define the problem. You're a team of NASA scientists assigned to a new program using weather balloons to study various types of phenomena. It's a pilot program that will only exist if the funders find the experiments both innovative and useful. Your payload needs to be no more than two pounds and fit within a 12-inch cube. Step two, research. Our students poured over thousands of pages of information, looked at images and video. They visited a local assisted living facility to talk with the residents there about how innovation has changed their lives. They visited with field-based experts and gained technical expertise. Step three, brainstorm. Here's where the students synthesize their research. They graphically display their ideas. They defend their ideas, but they come to consensus as a team an important step that we could all learn something from. And their ideas, they always amaze us. They came up with experiments that tested Boyle's law, that tested sunscreen and condensation at high altitudes. They tested radiation and the effects on plant tissue in near space. Step five, build. This is my favorite part of learning. This is messy. It's hands-on, it's connected. This is where research and design meets creativity. This is where creativity turns into problem solving and resilience. All those skills come to life. Step six, test. This isn't your typical test. This is the real world. Our balloon went to 90,000 feet and traveled over 35 miles. When it came down by parachute, the students analyzed the data. Step seven, communicate. Because our ideas are nothing without effective communication. And our students documented their research and their data in engineering reports that totaled up to 24 pages. They created interactive timelines and websites. They got up and got to school by 4.45 in the morning to get on the local news to promote their ideas, to promote their learning, to celebrate. Later that day, we went to Barnes & Noble and celebrated our learning some more at table displays. So what's going to get your children or your students jumping out of bed at four in the morning. Step eight, redesign. This is the most important phase. This is where we cement the learning. This is where we emphasize that learning is a continual process for every one of us. I absolutely love this picture. It makes me think about new horizons and possibilities for our schools. It makes me think about creating more spaces that are engaging and empowering for our students. It makes me think about creating cultures where we learn by doing and we teach the whole child. If we really want education to change, we're going to have to rethink it and recreate it, starting today. Because after all, it's their future. <laughs>